walking into this draft, Theros, this is like your fifth or sixth draft. What card do you want to see staring back at you when you open the pack? Well, I mean, I would like to see a great rare. Um, otherwise, I'm going to stick with Sealed. I still would like to see Sea God's Revenge. All that's, right. a, that's a card I'd be really happy to first pick. So I feel like all... You can even splash it off a Traveler's Amulet if things don't work out. Sure. What rare are we looking for? Rare. Perfect world. <laughs> Living the dream. I'm not, I'm not sure offhand what the best rare is. Wow. Um, there's a lot of very good ones. I'm thinking Elspeth Sun Champion. I don't know okay. why, I'm just thinking that's what I want to open. But we're going to see what... certainly... Certainly the candidate. We're going to see what Fabiano opens up here. Take a look at this pack. See what direction he wants to go. See a Scourge Mark. You see a God's Willing here. Voyages End. Very powerful card from yesterday. Give me with the God's Hopeful Eidolon. Destructive Revelry. What's that rare? Ooh. All right. Hammer of Porphyros is a pretty good card. Yeah, so when you look at the uncommon slots, he has Prowler's Helm and then two Disenchant effects. So we're probably not first picking an uncommon. Uh, it looks like he's really has a personal preference towards blue as he shows the voyages and grip tied to the front of the pack. But Hammer of Perforos still seems to be staying at the front. It looks like the card he's most interested in here. Yeah, I mean, the Hammer is a pretty good card. I mean, the, the opinion on red in this format is it's not great, it's pretty good. But I think if a card's going to push you towards red, I think it's certainly going to be the Hammer. I'm not sure if that one's passable. Plus, I mean, giving all your creatures haste is nothing to ignore, and then if you get into a bit of a later game, boom. Of note, what you want to note in a team draft also is what color you're passing. Sure. Uh, you're passing to max, and blue is your strongest color, so it's very possible you want to stay out of blue. More importantly, the only red cards he passed were Destructive Revelry, Revelry and Spark Jolt. Okay. We'll go through this one here. The Peak Eruption, more of a sideboard card, the Chimera. And the Emissary is pretty good. So is the Lightning Strike. Yeah, Lightning Strike right now is the, probably the most powerful card in the pack. On top of being an on-color pick, it's really hard to see Gerard picking anything else. Uh, also of note, once again, the next best cards he's passing are probably Thassa's Emissary and maybe even Mnemonic Wall. So he really looks like he's going to be in red and shying away from blue. Yeah, I think you want to send a clear signal there if you're Gerard too. You can pass along the Emissary. I mean, you've passed along a Voyage's End and a Grip Tie. If Max values those cards the same way Gerard does, you've pushed Max into blue. You're in red. Now you're just looking for your next color to partner up with so red. So that doesn't mean that you can't necessarily take blue, but you have to realize that if you take blue, you're not going to, you're going to get cut back too. Yeah. Which is fine. You know, the other guys on your left, really, he has to follow your signals. If you want to switch your signals, that's fine. It's perfectly reasonable to fight. Sea Lock Monster coming in in a third for the third pack here. Yeah, Gerard really wasn't interested in Sea Lock Monster there. It looks like Leaf Crown Elder and a Crow and Horse are the two things he's favoring right now. Um, there have also, a, to note, Ben, this is the second Staunch Hardy Warrior we've seen in a row. Okay. So there's possibly a green heroic archetype is open. Now how do we feel about this pick? You know, you got the option of the horse. Not entirely sure how good that card is. It's kind of slow. Gets a no four. Pumps out tokens at a pretty slow rate. Yeah, that's really the question. Is how good is a growing horse? How high of a pick is it? Leaf Crown Dried certainly is the safer pick. You see Ill Tempered Cyclops, you know, the Acroan Hoplite, if he wants to move into Boros potentially, for maybe a red white heroic deck. Haven't seen a lot of great white cards at this point. Let's see what his options are here. Well, if you draft in the Gerard Fabiano School of Magic, I have to think Burnished Heart is a really high pick for whatever you're doing. Sure. It's in a great mana fixer. At the same time, there's it's, so the pick is Burnished Heart's probably the most powerful card. Ill-Tempered Cyclops, I was going to say, is a great red card, and Voyaging Seder is one, is one of the top green cards at common. Gerard chose none of them. He took the powerful Acroan Hoplite. And so he does have, you know, he's got two base red cards, now he's got a red-white card, and he had a a green card as well so we'll see exactly which way he wants to branch out you see the pegasus there you also see the disciple as far as options are concerned i think now it's kind of asking him to commit um the Nylea's disciple i i think green is more open right now than white is based on what we've been getting what we've been seeing in each pack we've been seeing a really playable green card that said cavalry pegasus plays really well with a crow and hoplite and if he can get that deck together which is that's what he's gonna he's take. gonna go for that it, yeah, white has not has been somewhat open. I think, I think white and green are the two open colors. I don't think red's actually open right now, but he can still. That should be fine. I don't think Maxwell don't need to do it. He'll get good cards packed too for it. Too. Feels like he might have a Boro state of mind. You see a Boulder Fall here, a tra Traveler's Amulet. You also see a Traveling Philosopher. So if he wants to maybe curve out with a, uh, with a red white deck, the Philosopher could be interesting. But it is just a boring old two two. He's also looking at Time of Feed. He's gonna take Divine Verdict here. Maybe that's a trick that he really does end up liking. 
or doesn't want to play against. Divine Verdict's probably stronger in this format than it has been in most, just because of the fact that uh, there are so many large creatures to deal with. We see this is his initial pack. Remember, the only red cards that he opened were Destructive Revelry, Spark Jolt, and Hammer Perforos. All of them are still in the booster. Leaf Crown Elder tabling as well. Leaf Crown Dryad is or excuse, also Leaf Crown Dryad, in the excuse booster. Me. Um, that said, he's kind of committed to red white. He still is taking Destructive Revelry. Yeah, it looks that. like he's kind of in in between this white and red area right now. He's trying to figure out what his second color is going to be. I think we're I think we're pretty locked into red as our base color. Now, that's kind of interesting to see the Staunch Hearted Warrior come back here. Not, I mean, not. I don't think it's the best card in red-green, but it's not terrible. Well, he knows. So here's what I've noticed in the first lap pack round. And in a team draft, you really have to... Good memory can really help you. Um, there was a Staunch Hearted Warrior in this booster. There was one in the next booster. And then booster after that had a Warrior's Lesson in it, which is a double-targeting green spell. It's very possible that Jard could get all three. That said, he took the... Baden to Antiquity, he took a Disenchant instead of the Stone Charted Warrior. So you see Hunt the Hunter, that's the green flight spell, great for the mirror matches, so he's going to take yeah, that. He doesn't actually have a single green creature yet, so that pick is a little confusing to me. Yeah, maybe a little speculation, there's a green creature, and a pretty good one there, in the Sedge Scorpion. You'll see the Fleet Flyer Sandals there, a good sideboard card, potentially a good main deck card. The issue here, I think, mean, Matthias, is that we haven't seen a lot of great red cards. Yeah. being passed to him. So he takes the Hammer of Porphyros, but he hasn't really gotten a build on that very well. In a six-man draft, going a straight two-color aggro deck can be tougher because there's, with fewer players, it just means that you end up with more three-color decks. Having, you know, sticking to that really narrow archetype is harder because you really only get six cracks at opening the cards you need. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is really a gift here with the yeah. Traveler's Yeah, Amulet. I think the Traveler's Amulet is actually cards a really nice late pickup. You know, might be able to fix it. Maybe, able to, you know, help his mana if he ends up being three colors. I think ideally in a perfect world he ends up being two. He's going to pass the community with the gods. Uh, he's going to take the community with the gods and pass his last card. We'll see what he ends up taking here for the last one. And that should be playable. Well, Seder Rambler is probably fine. Yeah. Um, so in review, his red cards, he has just the hammer, the light. He has the Crone Hoplite, the Rambler, the Revelry, and the Spark Jolt. I think he would like to be red-white, given the option, but it... It doesn't really feel like he's there yet. And that was the thing when he first had that choice between going blue, white and going green. He had to pick between Nylea's, Nylea's Disciple and the Cavalry Pegasus. Um, he ended up going with the Pegasus, which I think is the more... It certainly is the greedier pick. Sure. It's the more powerful interaction. Um, and the pack before he took a Crow and Hoplite, when he had a bunch of mono card options, I believe he had an ill-tempered Cyclops in that pack. So he's... Burning a couple early picks in the hope that things will turn out is an aggressive way to draft. Um, and it's really, that's one of the style, stylized things. You know, do you want, do you play it safe and take an ill tempered Cyclops, or do you take in a Crow and Hoplite saying, hey, if this Boros, ten, Boros deck is open, this is the best pick? Yeah, things um, really do end up breaking his way if that's the case. See him go right to the rare this time. Yeah. Agent of Fates, Order of Porphyros, Helmix leader back there. So now we see a little bit better options here for drawing this pack. Well, I've heard some players say that Phalanx leader may be the top uncommon in the set. Mm. Um, if he wants to try to go that human heroic archetype, which it looked like he was trying to favor. You have to think that Phalanx Leader is the pick here. On the other hand, white, it's questionable how open white was. Yep, if agreed. That would certainly, if, if you're into a risky pick, I think that's your pick. Otherwise, he's probably looking at taking something like Ordeal of Perforos, which the, the last thing he can look at is there's a Dragon's Mantle and a two-headed Cerberus in this pack. If he can take one, he can probably table the other, and, I think and that's a pretty good combo between the two. I think it's pretty easy to be able to wield the Dragon's Mantle. He's going to take, wow, so he's going to take Agent that's of Fates. That's a Gerard Fabiano pick. I think he's one of the few players who would take Agent of the Fates out of that pack. I think, I mean, that feels like a defensive draft to me. He feels like it's just way too good of a card to pass. And so we're going to take a look at this pack, Order of Porphyros. Well, if he was, he was willing to pick up a second color to take that first Akroan Hoplite, there's another Akroan Hoplite in that. I know he's looking at that tim Timoret, but I, if I'm Gerard, based on last pack, I'm not even sure my opponent can play Timoret. I would probably take the Akroan Hoplite here. I don't think Timoret's unbeatable, and multiple Hoplites is really important to that red-white aggro strategy. It looks like he's almost dead set on taking the murder. You know, this could be just another defensive draft. It, it feels like maybe, I mean, maybe he's switching. Not entirely sure. He seems to be abandoning the red-white. I mean, he had some, like, you have to make sure your own deck's good. Remember, he, 
hate drafting is really important in the team draft, but he could have started this pack two on Phalanx leader a Crow and Hoplite. Yep. And he's those aren't those cards that are not going to come back to him. Uh, there's a Prophet of Kufrix, the great blue green rare. I mean, how much hate drafting are we going to do here? You know, we I, like you could take Prophet of Kufrix here too. There's a Disciple of, of Phoenix. Looks like he might be switching into black. Yeah, I mean, otherwise his pick is the Minotaur Skull Cleaver. Mm -hmm. If he still likes that red option. I mean, what, all you really know right now is that he's not blue. Yeah, that's the one thing that we're sure of. So, yeah, okay. It's a, this is so a very now, loud declaration he's switching into black. Yeah, so now he's actually just taking the black cards. Um, it's going to forgo that cavalry. So he's losing a cavalry Pegasus and an Akrow and Hoplite. But he did get Agent of the Fates into Merit, which were his first two picks this pack. So he, he's picked up a lot of power level. The thing he now has to watch out for... He has to make sure he, his playables count and stays high enough. Yeah, he has to make sure he has enough cards to play with Borderland Minotaur there. Of his options, Cutthroat Maneuvers. Yeah, Cutthroat Maneuver is, one, is another one of the double targeting spells. It's the black one. It's probably the worst just because black's the least in the market for Heroic, and it costs four mana. Well, I think he's in the market for Heroic now, though, because of that Agent of Fates. Mm -hmm. that he's very interested in he having a target spell. He did pick up one of, the heroic, yep. like, one of the few Heroic black cards. His That's... creature count is a little low, which he has to watch out for. If he's on top of his game, I I at least still really like that we have the two-headed Cerberus. I think that there was that Dragon Mantle that could possibly wheel. We may see him take that. There is one of those two-headed Cerberuses. There also it were a pair of Ordeal of Perforoses. If you think one of those two Ordeals is going to wheel, and you like playing Ordeals, we saw a lot of mixed reviews on that last mm -hmm. time. Then that's a card you can take. Looks like he likes Ordeal of of Erebos for his deck. Another targeting effect for Agent of yeah. Fates. I, I'm i interested on that pick just because we know that there's the two red Ordeals. I'm I'm not sure I care which color Ordeal I'm getting. And I think you want to make sure... Right now, he's the second time in a row where he's had the option to take a creature. And he's been taking a spell over it. Mm -hmm. um, he's actually just very low on creatures. So you have Ill-Tempered Cyclops, a two-headed Cerebus here. As far as options are concerned, another Black Order. So he's going to select his card and move on to the next pack here. Alright, and this is the pack he opened. It does still have that combo of Dragon Mantle and Cerberus. The one-two punch? Yeah, well he hasn't taken... There's been about a two-headed Cerberus in every pack, and Jared hasn't taken any of them yet. So I, I, it seems to me like he doesn't actually... He doesn't really value that card very highly. Sure. And that's possible that I, I'm probably just off the mark on that card. He does take, it was Baleful Idol on, mm -hmm. I believe. So let's see where we go for this pack. The Traverse Amulet. We know he has one of those already if he's looking for more mana fixing. He may still be trying to play those white cards. Um, there aren't really great options here. Pursuit of Betrayal, that's your threat and effect in this format. So it looks like he's just trying to play two color. Were he a three color deck, he'd either take the Verdict to support his third color white, or he'd take the Amulet so he can play the third color white. It looks like he may finally take a creature here. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you that he definitely needs one. Or, I mean, a couple more, which, you know, I think that's what we're going to see for pack three. That's what he's going to try to sure up with. Yeah. It's really just a heavy... And I think it looks like Gerard was really right when he took that or the Black Ordeal. Neither of the Ordeal of Perforosas ended up table. Mm -hmm. Which means there's at least one of the Red Drafter at the table. Certainly, if not two. And the, the pack, here it comes. The Temple is interesting. There's also the Steed there. Oh, yet another Grizzly Bear. Just for curve considerations, it looks like. Yeah. Not a card you're excited to play, but it's it's serviceable. He does get another now, ordeal. Yeah, that's this is the thing. It either means that people are just valuing the black ordeal a lot lower than the red one, or there's just not a you know the person who's drafting red isn't drafting black. Sure. Oh, some more black cards coming around here. It's Boon of Erebos. We actually saw as a decent trick. He's gonna pass the March of the Returned as the final card, and he picks up a Return Centaur. Okay. So let's take a look at what he's gonna do this time, because now he's gonna start moving cards around front and back. All that good stuff. So there's your Agent of Fates. There's your Murder King. Well, this is the danger here right now, is his creature count is so low. Well, I think we're just going to see him... Pro I mean, in Pack 3, he's almost certainly going to have to prioritize creatures. 
over spells. It's got a lot of two drops. But you saw, you know, what we saw in, in pack two, you could tell that he just wasn't happy with how the draft was going. Maybe he just had a feel, maybe, you know, the signals that were past him, just like black is kind of open, because he took a, an immediate shift of Agent of the Fates and then uh, Timurite the Murder King. Like yeah. an immediate change of direction. It's interesting because of what he passed to get into that. He passed some great white cards, which turned out to be pretty savvy. As I don't think white was very open that time. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. So now he's, he's you know, he, he's in a color combination now. I think, you know, he knows exactly what he wants. You know, he, he's black red. Yeah, There's no shifting. If you remember, this. pack one, the open colors were white and green. Red was not very open. You kind of would expect that to continue this pack, so this might be a more difficult pack for Gerard. He definitely moved in a pack two direction. Well, there is our first gray merchant, along with the Titan Strength that he's pulled to the fort. And oh my! Well, we found our pick. Thonia of the Cruel has shown up. Those are four, you know, those are three very good black cards. Titan Strength is certainly a good red card, especially when you have an Agent of Fates, but I can't imagine him passing out Thonia of the Cruel. One, because he goes for a stack, and two, it's a team draft. So team draft, you can't pass this card regardless of what you are when you opened it. I mean, I think he, he's shifting the cards on so that he'll, he can try to remember and what might table and plan for it. The pick here is going to be Hythonia. Yeah, I would be very surprised if he does not take the rear, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So a very good open there for Fabiano as he'll pass his pack over to Teets, awaiting on his pack from Jim Davis. Looks like the color shift is working out thus far. Maybe he knew he was going to open up back to back. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's got a lot of strong rares in black right now. Let's see what he finds this time. For the second pack, and post pack one and pack three, he's been passed a lightning strike. Gerard does not even seem to look at Keepsake Gorgon, which was in the pack. I mean, it's pretty easy to get blinded by the old lightning strike. And if the draft is going the way that he thinks it's going, which is he might be the only black drafter, then that Keepsake Gorgon might be on the wheel here. Because remember, on the back end of pack I two... I can't imagine you expect a wheel of Keepsake Gorgon. I don't think you expect to, but I think that, one, I think lightning strike is probably the better card. Two, if the draft is going the way he thinks it's going, and he is the only black drafter, and he's alone, especially with how things came in pack two, it's worth a gamble. It's possible. I, it, Because we're early in the draft format, I think that card may wheel. I would be very surprised to see it wheel once people once we know more about the format. Dark Betrayal for the mirror. We don't think, if he doesn't think there's another black deck, I don't think he takes the card. I, I agree with you there for sure. Cavern Lampid. <laughs> Yes, Kevin Lampad and Loathsome Catablipas are the black cards. He's actually looking at a Crow and Crusader right now. I think he's going to stick with the Cavern. I think he just wants to stay black. Especially, you know, that's a bestow effect for his Agent of Fates. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to put that in his pile. I think he's bringing Dark Betrayal to the front just to make sure that he knows that it, he knows it exists. Okay, it would be a pretty good card against him yes. right now. So let's see what Fabiano finds this pack. Is he still going to find more good black cards? You got a Titan Strength. You got a Dragon's Mantle. Centaur Battlemaster. Deathbell Raider. Nice card for his deck. He is base black right now, though. There's a Baleful Eidolon. Yeah, I think, we're, think we like the 2 3 here. It's Death, uh, Deathbell Raider. Yeah, if he can, I mean, if he can play it on curve, it's absolutely fantastic in his deck. And this is the kind of card that I think he, he was hoping to pick up over the course of this draft. It's, it's really. I don't say he's the only one that can play it, but he's the only one that can. He's the, person who can play it the best. He did have two ordeals, and that card plays pretty nicely with ordeals. Also true. So Fabiano takes the 2-3 that has attack return. There's a Disciple of Phoenix. Moves that to the front very, very quickly. So and this was the worry when we set with saying this is going to be more like pack one. If you see all the open cards here, they are once again white and green. Mm -hmm. And Gerard was forced to um, I think take, you know, certainly not take what was not the best card in the pack. But it might be the best card for him. Oh, I mean, it is right now. Yeah. It's just, you know, you have to think, um, when you, when this happens in a draft, you just have to assume that pack three, you're not going to get a huge number of playables. Things will tail off pretty early. Divine Verdict, Boulder Fall, there's your Mana Fixer, an Unknown Shore. Green, white, green, white, green, white. Yeah. A lot of green, white cards. I'm with you there. I mean, with the exception of two cards, they actually just are all green or white. Mm -hmm. And they're high picks, too. You know, you have Voyaging Seder, Divine Verdict, even Chronicler of Heroes still in the back. Looks like he's going to defensively draft a Divine Verdict here. Well, he may have to play it. I'm not sure he's getting to 23 playables in just... Another Divine Verdict. Yeah, white, you see this, pack, see this pack as well. Green, white, green, white, couple artifacts. 
Yeah, he could have a third Divine Verdict, or he could take that Burnished Heart. It's a colorless mm -hmm. card that he can play. It also helps him splash whatever he needs to. Yeah, it looks like he is going to take the Burnished Heart. <laughs> All right, so, you know, that pack that he opened that had Sip of Hemlock, that had Grey Merchant, uh, that had the Titan Strength, I think that's going to be interesting to see what comes back from that pack. You see a Traveling Philosopher here. Green, white, green, white. Blue, blue. No black, no red. Right, this was... And we kind of knew from pack one that this would be happening. Mm -hmm. This is, and it's happening pretty hard to him. He made the switch, but he is having to fight now with, you know, between Jim or Max or some people downstream. Another verdict is going to go into the pile. We well, can't. I mean, if you're playing a slower three-color deck, triple divine verdict certainly isn't a bad place to be. There's dark betrayal. Yeah, so those black cards, that was the that, that previous pack was the pack with the black cards, the Sip right. and the Grey Merchant, and neither of them came back. So people are in black at this table. Not too surprising, black arguably one of the best colors in this format. It certainly was in the sealed deck. Um, and that means, what he now knows, that means the Dark Betrayal will be good. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he doesn't sit down to find out that both his teammates are black. <laughs> yeah, no but. kidding. He's going to take the Eidolon with that pack. You had to think coming into this pack when he opened up the Gorgon and saw Grey Merchant and Sip of, Tra Sip of uh, Hemlock, excuse me, thinking, all right, there's a pretty good chance I might wield one of these bad boys. And, you know, making my deck is going to work, end up, you know, coming together quite well, but that did not end up being well, the case. When he went to Black Pack 2, to a certain level, he knew he was playing with fire there. Yeah. There was no indication that Black was open Pack 1. He passed some decent Black Pack 1, and he just moved into this color. Which he knew was he was gonna have to fight for pack three, and maybe even have to fight for pack two. There's a null. Right up with the Triton Shorekeeper, and that is going to be it for the draft. So players will get seated momentarily. But basically, what we see here is Fabiano, who was giving a thumbs up to his friends with a pretty confident smile on his face, with a base black with a splash of red deck, couple disciple of Phoenixes. He's got Timur at the Murder King. He's got the. Uh, the the uh, Hythonia of the Cruel, the rare Gorgon.